Our saint today, Saint Gertrude the Great, is one of those greatest of mystics of the Catholic Church. When she was only a young woman, 26 years old, our Lord started to show himself in a sensible manner to her in a, in a long and great series of revelations, which were to cover her whole life. There's a wonderful book on this, The Life and Revelations of St. Gertrude the Great, that you should read at some point in your life. But in these revelations, she, she both spoke and listened to our Lord day in and day out as these revelations were given. And she was, they say, so loved by our blessed Lord that Christ himself said to her on one occasion, after the divine sacrament of the altar, there was no earthly resting place that he loved so much as the heart of Gertrude. That is a beautiful thought. And to one person who asked where they might find our Lord, he said to this person, if you enjoy my presence, you shall find me in the heart of Gertrude. As if to say, stay with her, be devoted to her. You will always find me there if you want to be with me. And one other pious soul asked, why St. Gertrude was so loved? And our Lord answered only this, I love her so much because of the holy liberty of her heart into which nothing else can enter to dispute my sway. In other words, she was attached to nothing but the love of Almighty God. And that alone swayed her heart. Our Lord, it is said, also spoke to her freely in a very familiar manner and in so touching a manner that one author, one very holy <coughs> man, said it could give us some idea of how our Lord spoke to the Blessed Virgin Mary herself. That is how familiar, on what familiar terms our Lord was on with St. Gertrude. And among the many graces that our Lord gave to St. Gertrude are these. On one Christmas day, it says that as she knelt before the creche, before the manger scene, the Christ child leapt from the crib to unite himself to the heart of Gertrude. On another occasion, Our Lady herself appeared to St. Gertrude and placed the Christ child in her arms. Our Lord constantly in these revelations spoke to her in very confiding ways and he taught her himself how to think, how to speak, and how to act so as to make herself a pleasing spouse of our Lord. But the one devotion that you might say was the best that St. Gertrude practiced was the devotion to the Sacred Heart. It was that that characterized all of her piety. And please note that this was even before the apparitions of the Sacred Heart to St. Margaret Mary out of Cope. There was St. Gertrude who received these revelations. Everything, it says, in her life <coughs> drew her to it, the love of the Sacred Heart. Again and again, our Lord would reveal his heart to her and show her how he wished to remain united always with St. Gertrude. And on one occasion, he so beautifully took his heart from his own chest and replaced her heart with his. They exchanged hearts. If you can imagine what a beautiful scene that must have been. When one reads the life of St. Gertrude, he begins to envy her in a certain sense for all of her conversations, familiar conversations with our Lord. But it is only because we fail to understand what God does for us every single day from the tabernacle. 
there is nothing different in essence between what our Lord did for St. Gertrude and what he does from the tabernacle for us. There is a difference in the manner in which he speaks and reveals himself, but in essence, he does the exact same thing and shows the same sort of favors and graces. And it is only that we fail to recognize it. And this 40 hours devotion is a perfect reminder of how close our Lord is to us. St. Gertrude was one day meditating on the goodness and the love of God, which made him dwell in the Holy Eucharist among us. And our Lord spoke to her in a sort of a parable or an analogy. He said, imagine that there is a son, a little boy, the son of a king. Well, this son of the king is greater and more dignified than the children who are running about and playing in the streets of the town. (coughs) The king's son has the palace. He has everything that can make him naturally happy. He has everything in that palace. Yet, if you, our Lord continues, if you give that little child, the son's, the king's son, the choice to go into the street and play with other children, or to stay in the palace where he will have everything else that he wants, the child will always choose to go play in the streets with the other kids. And so our Lord says to St. Gertrude, Thus I too find my pleasure in being with you, and having instituted the blessed sacrament for this end, anyone who prevents a soul from receiving me deprives me of a great pleasure. Our Lord himself has his Father's palace in heaven, yet he chooses of his own free will to come down with his children and to spend time with them. And that is what we are doing in this 40 hours. In sacred scripture it says, it is my delight to be with the children of men. In this 40 hours, we receive an invitation from our Lord that he truly wants to see us here. As we come for our holy hour, we so often get this attitude that, well, it's just one more thing for us to do among many. That should never be the attitude. Our, our Lord is calling you here because He wants to speak to you. He wants to see you or just spend time in your company. You may not see Him with your bodily eyes, but He sees you through the Eucharistic veils and He is with you. Many of you will, throughout these next 40 hours, have much travel and much work. But here is the thing. You must not allow any of those things to make you anxious. Our Lord, in the next 40 hours, asks only one thing, your company, just to be with you. So the choir you will be here to sing to the child Jesus. Don't look at it as anything more. This child will be happy with whatever you sing to him. And for the laity, you are here sitting at his feet. And there, like Magdalene, you are praying to him. Say anything that's on your heart. And the priests and the servers, so busy, actively serving him at the altar, will do it all, but do it all with a great degree of charity and love of the sacred heart. Do everything, in other words, that is necessary for your daily life in the next 40 hours. But all the extras, let's put aside and come back and spend time with our blessed Lord. This 40 hours is truly a grace in which our Lord truly says to each one of us, Come to me, all you that labor and are burdened, 
and I will refresh you. It is my delight to be with the children of men. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost.